Tawba is the second important, the second pillar of Islam. After Tawheed, believing in Allah, that there's no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your worship, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger, the second is Salah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first deed that will be asked you on the day of judgment is about your Salah. And according to Imam al-Bahabi, not praying falls as the fourth major sin in Islam. Number one is shirk. Second is murder. Third is black magic. Fourth is foregoing salah. It is the fourth major sin in Islam. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, said, mentioned Sahih Bukhari, volume one in the book of Salah, that if you pray in Jama, you get 25 times, 27 times more salah. So praying in Jaba is 25 to 27 times better congregation. And there are several hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi The hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari volume 1 in the book of Salah that the Prophet said that people do not come to the mosque for the Jummah Salah. He felt like telling one of the Sahaba to lead the Salah so that he would go and burn the houses of those people who did not come for the Jummah Salah. There's another hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad said. So based on the scholars, praying Jummah Salah is fard. And if you do it for three times without reason, Allah blocks your heart. And according to Imam al-Dhabi, it is the 66th major sin in Islam. Not paying, praying persistently Jummah Salah in congregation is the 66th major sin. Imam al-Dhabi also says sin number 65. One sin before that that persistently not praying in the mosque in the congregation salah with jamaah without a valid reason there's another hadith of Sahih Bukhari volume 1 book of salah the prophet said the hypocrites did not come for the fajr salah or the isha salah and if they knew the reward they would come crawling i felt like telling one of the sahabas to lead the salah so that i can go out and burn the homes of the men with them in it who did not come for the congregation salah so praying in jama the five times salah according to very few scholars it is mustahab sunnah majority scholars say it is fard imam al dhabi says in his book in his kabair it is the 65th major sin that if you do not pray five times salah in the congregation in the mosque so most of the scholars agree that you have to pray unless you have a valid reason that if maybe you're traveling or if you're sick or normally at the time of the sahabas if a person did not come to the mosque to pray he was either sick or he was a munafik that's what the did. so praying compulsory in the salah in congregation is a must what are the various benefits i can give a talk for one hour only on scientific benefits time doesn't permit me but you can see my video cassette you come closer to the muslim ummah you get guidance from the Imam, your khushu increases. The best time, the best peace of mind is the time of Salah. And the best part of Salah is the sujood. Allah mentioned sajda and sujood in the Quran 92 times. But if you know what khushu is, you will understand. You can only enjoy the fruit if you have a taste of it. So if you know what benefit of Salah, one minor benefit, minor benefit of you. You know, people say, you know, the 10 richest men in the world and list goes on. Mukesh Ambani, number 10 and Warren Buffett and number one goes to Bill Gates. Now it is Jeff something. He's overtaken Bill Gates recently. Jeff someone uh, who's the owner of Amazon. He's overtaken Bill Gates, number one. And there was another post that says number 10 Ambani Number three, Bill Gates. Number two, Jeff. Number one is who? A Muslim who offers two rakat of sunnah salah before fajr. Because the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if you pray two rakat sunnah before fajr, it is more valuable than the earth and the wealth in it. So if you have a Muslim, you understand that, you will know the reward of that. It's the sunnah salah. Sunnah Mokeda. So imagine what would be the reward for the Fajr Salah. 
but how many Muslims realize that? Many do, but not all. If you know that, you know, once a businessman approached me, the billionaire, you know, but the I, I pray four times Salah, but I cannot get up for Fajr. So I told him that what if you have a meeting tomorrow, early in the morning, at 5:30? Where if the deal clicks, you'll get a billion dollar. He said, I will not sleep the full night. So I told him, you know, the Sunnah Salah of the Fajr is more valuable than the world and the wealth in it. Trillions and zillions of dollars. So if you have that Iman and if you have that faith, then you will realize what important it is. That's what the Prophet said. If the Munafiq knew what was the benefit of coming for the Isha Salah and Fajr Salah to the mosque, they would crawl coming to it. So unfortunately, most of us Muslims don't know the benefit. But Alhamdulillah, I'm happy in Malaysia as compared to India. The percentage of Muslims praying in India is very small in the mosque. I would say less than 5%. But here, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy that the percentage of Muslim men Muslims praying in the mosque is multiple times more than India and Pakistan. But as a Muslim, the benefit you get, the sukoon, the serenity, the peace, it is much more than the wealth. So if you know what peace is, you will value it. If you don't know, you won't value it. So if a Muslim reads the Quran and the Hadith and understands what benefit it is, then you will care less for the material things. And you will come closer to the deen and you find the benefit. We put our head on the ground for how can we want blessing in our wealth when the owner of blessing is disregarded five times a day. We don't even read Salah. Can I get happiness? Whilst I am going against the owner of happiness, another narration says, Man taraka salata muta'ammidan, faqad kafa, a'udhu billah, Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Whoever leaves and forsakes salah purposely, intentionally, intentionally, they cannot call themselves those within the fold of Islam. Today when you see a camera, and I saw so many in Doha, Every traffic light, there is a camera. I want to say a point. You can take it how you want. I am a foreigner here, but I learned something. Do you know how people fear the camera? No matter what, they will break so hard that the man behind them might hit them. They don't mind, but that 6,000, I must not get the fine. Am I right? It's true because we are worried. We have a fine. We are, we are going to be penalized. Something is going to go from our pocket if we cross and there is a camera flash. I want to say something you can take home. If we fear Allah, half of what we fear a camera, we would solve our problem. If you are a big manager at your company, someone wants leave and they need to go through you in order to get the leave. And then you find that they have, or whilst they were walking, you looked at them and they told you, look, please, can you do this for me and that for me? And you did not do it. And you didn't do it at all. In fact, you went against them. The day you came for leave, what, what is the chance of you getting your leave? When you know that you haven't gone in, you haven't done anything to even prove that you are a dedicated worker and now you want leave. He will tell you, look, you don't really deserve the leave now. You need to go and work a bit harder and then come back whenever you have proven yourself. What happens with us? We want goodness. We want happiness. We want contentment. We want sustenance. We want our children to be good. We want our lives to be in order. We want goodness in our marriages and goodness in all aspects of our life. But are we prepared to fulfill the instruction of the owner of all that? I think today it would be important for us to speak on the mobile phone for one minute to say, how can we allow ourselves to come in the house of Allah? We've made the effort. We made wudu. We managed to drive all the way here or to walk all the way here. We braved the heat or the weather conditions. As we walk in, it is nice and cool. And then we are sitting with our mobile phones and busy plugging in with everyone else on the globe. And whilst everyone is in salah, the Imam is about to say, And you hear this man's phone ring. And the other man's phone ring and one of the sister's phones rings. And if the phone ring, it's one thing. 
but the tone itself is a disaster it is really desecration of the masjid because those who are immoral those who have engaged in the worst immorality in the world and they have sung songs that are full of nudity the same song we bring it as a ringtone into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without shame if that's the case where is our salah where is our salah so people will come for salah but as a routine only routine not with the heart plugged in to say when I say Allahu Akbar I am actually saying Allah is the greatest amazing Allah is the greatest who is Allah my maker is the greatest the one whom I depend upon is the greatest the one who owns every aspect of my entire existence is the greatest can there be a more beautiful way than commencing your plug-in with your maker than that sometimes you find people they read salah as though they are competing with the chickens the chickens pecking the grain from the floor a man is down before you can say subhana he's already up and he, next thing he's gone and the imam says sami allahu liman hamida and he's still standing and some people are halfway down already halfway down they want to go get done with how can we do this we are insulting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are insulting ourselves allah says i don't need this there are other people who will be praying salah better than me and you let's compete with one another when it comes to salah which means we need to think to ourselves let me read the best prayer possible as what was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and I will take my time and I will try to concentrate when we have too much on our heads we lose concentration so when we come to the masjid try not to have much on your head lay whatever you have to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to the house of Allah and wallahi you will achieve success you see this ultimate success is the success in the life after death how many people have been so wealthy but they've still died how many have been much more powerful than us they've still died so one of the biggest means of success is to surrender to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the means of surrendering or one of the points that we should be surrendering regarding is the salah salah five times a day remember never compromise it a muslim does not read salah a muslim does not miss salah salah a narration says the differing point the defining point between us and those what is it it is salah it's important for us to give greater importance to salah and when we come for salah we should be dressed appropriately with good clothing as the Quran says, Ya Bani Adam khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O children of Adam, ensure that you have adorned yourself correctly. Take your adornment when you get to the places of worship where you are going to put your head down for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What this means is sometimes people might come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dressed in their night clothing which they only wear when they wake up from their sleep the salah might be done your private area or part is covered so i cannot tell you your salah is not valid it is valid because you have covered but you want to plug in greater to achieve more of the spiritual benefit you need to take pride i'm going to plug in with allah if i had a meeting with someone in the dunya I would probably wear some good clothing at least and smell good and at least give importance to the meeting. I want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least I need to wear clothing that is decent. So if we look forward to salah, we will be able to achieve a greater benefit than to just fulfill salah. And this is why I want to end by saying there is a very big difference between reading salah because you have to read it and reading salah because you want to read it there is a difference between the two many people read it because they have to read it but let us be from amongst those who read it because we want to read it allahu akbar i want to do it not i have to i have to is a stage but move above that 
we would like to read salah because we want to that is when we will be able to plug in with allah i see there are some children here as well wallahi your success and mine lies in fulfilling salah don't be lazy